Welcome to the Comlex 5-Minute Review. Today's topic is osteopathic manipulative medicine in the cranial field. We're going to be reviewing lots of craniosacral techniques and its indications, complications, as well as some contraindications. Um, before we begin, please visit comlexflashcards.com for more lectures, podcasts, and information as you prepare for the Comlex board examination. These lectures are going to help you for level 1, 2, as well as 3 of the Comlex board exam. So let's get started. First, I would like to thank Derek Stone from the OUCOM Core um, Osteopathic Principles and Practices Committee. These pictures from some of the slides are borrowed from OUCOM Core's website. So let's talk about craniosacral techniques. What are the indications for craniosacral treatment? Well, any sort of an SPS strain is really an indication, whether it's a lateral strain, a um, vertical strain, or if it's a side bending torsion. Um, and so any strain on the SPS uh, where the sphenoid and the occiput have some sort of a strain where one of the bones changes its position and there's mobility in one of those joints is an indication for craniosacral techniques. So any SPS strain pattern. Secondly is head trauma. That is, you know, forceful dental procedures, um, some kind of an assault or a motor vehicle accident where the bones actually are distorted in terms of their normal rhythm. And so craniosacral techniques can help realign the bones and joints and restore the mobility of those bones. Thirdly, um, craniosacral techniques have an indication for a newly delivered neonate, in which case the techniques help to realign cranial bones that may have been traumatized during delivery. And the goal is mainly to prevent the development of cranial bones growing together to form a synostis. Okay? So, like I said, anytime a newly delivered neonate is delivered, um, craniosacral techniques do have an indication here where the osteopathic physician can realign the cranial bones. Okay, so what are some of the complications? Well, the most common complications include headache, tinnitus, dizziness, and sometimes altered heart rate, blood pressure, and respiratory rate. What about the comp contraindications? Well, patients who have skull fractures or intracranial bleeds of any type or an increased intracranial pressure are absolute contraindications for craniosacral techniques. Also, the patients with CNS neurological disorders, particularly seizure disorders, as well as um, traumatic brain injury should be approached with more care than normal. Okay, But definitely the skull fracture, intracranial bleeds, and intracranial pressures which are increased are contraindications. And you want to be more careful with CNS neurological disorders such as seizures or any kind of a brain injury. Now let's review our first topic today. This is a C4V bulb decompression, okay? And this, this technique is mainly utilized to increase the CRI amplitude. It's done by decompressing any of the SPS compression that may exist, okay? So if there is any SPS compression, this technique helps to decompress that, all right? To perform this technique, the flexible and extensive forces of the occiput are resisted by the practitioner until a still point is reached. And when the practitioner starts this exercise, the thenar eminences on the occipital bone medial to the occipital mastoid sutures are placed, as you can see here in this picture. The osteopathic physician palpates cranial flexion and extension gently encourages extension and resists flexion until the CRI is stopped and the osteopathic physician maintains this extension still point until the CRI returns typically at a greater amplitude okay so the key point in this technique is to make sure that the fl flexion and extensive extension forces of the occiput are resisted until a certain still point is reached 
after which the physician will release the area to permit restoration of the normal flexion and extension with the enhanced CRI amplitude. So the, the osteopathic physician will maintain the extension still point until the CRI returns with a greater amplitude. Okay, So let's repeat some of the steps here. First, the complex exam can ask you a question about proper hand technique. The thenar eminences are on the occipital bone medial to the occipital mastoid suture. Okay, So they're medial to the occipital mastoid suture. Secondly, you are palpating for the craniosacral flexion and extension and you're encouraging extension and resisting flexion until the CRI stops. Then you maintain that still point until the CRI returns and typically it will return with a greater amplitude. Okay, so that's the C4V technique again. It's called the bulb decompression technique um, and it's important to understand it. The next technique I'd like to talk about is the vault hold. This is mainly to modulate any kind of SBS strains by balancing membranous tensions. Okay, and as you can see in the picture here, there is a posterior temporal hold and a vault hold on the right. We're focused on the vault hold. To perform this, the patient is placed in a supine position. The clinician places his thumbs in a manner that cross over but do not touch the sagittal suture. That's important point here. The index fingers are placed over the greater wing of the sphenoid, all right, and the middle fingers are placed on the squamous portion of the temporal bone. Um, that's the area just anterior to the ears. Now the ring fingers are placed over the mastoid process and the little fingers are positioned over the squamous portion of the occiput. Then the finger pads are used to induce motion. Okay, so the board exam can ask you several questions. First, what is this technique used for? It's used to modulate SPS strains by balancing membranous tensions, okay? Again, how are the fingers placed when you are performing vault hold technique? The index finger is placed over the greater wing of the sphenoid, okay, as you can see here. The middle finger is placed on the squamous portion of the temporal bone, and it's just anterior to the ear. Next, the ring finger is placed over the mastoid process, and the little finger is positioned in the squamous portion of the occiput here. So it's important to understand the vault hold technique and its use. Again, the importance here is to understand that it's used for modulating SPS strains. All right. That was a quick review of two very high yield cranial techniques that you're likely to see on the Comlex exam. Visit ComlexFlashcards.com for more preparatory resources on preparing for the Comlex board exam and we wish you all the best in your Comlex preparation. Thank you.